Hey everybody, so now we're going to talk about the fifth tool on the toolbar, the scissors. So I'm going to go ahead and tap on those scissors and highlight them up at the top there so you can see. Yet again, another reminder that anything that you want to access, you just swipe left and swipe right to get it. And if you prefer your tools at the bottom, flick them down with your finger and you can use them down there. Or you can put them at the top if that's what you prefer. So the scissors are super fun tool. I have used the scissors on multiple occasions to switch people's heads. This is really handy if you're doing something like taking family photos and in every single one somebody has their eyes closed. You just find the picture that you like the best, find a head that's in the same position, it has to be in the same orientation so that the light is correct. You scissor their heads out, trace it around, cut it out, open up that other photo that you like, paste it in, make sure that the size is correct, blend the edges if you need to, and voila, you have a family photo where everyone has their eyes open. Now, I'm not a graphic designer, I've made that very clear, but I am really proud of some of the work that I've done, and one of the pieces that I did, I'm gonna go ahead and open it up now, import, edit a photo, let's grab it from the sketchbook, um, take a look at, let's see if I can find it. Ah, there we go. Okay. This is a picture of my daughter up at Sundance. And I want you to take a really good look at that because I used only the tools in Udoodle, including the scissors, and only on my iPhone. I wasn't even doing this on an iPad, and I want to show you what the original photo looked like. So, once again, I'm going to grab that photo that I want to show you. The original actually had a second little girl in it. This photo I loved so much of my daughter, right? It was just perfect. The mountain in the background and the lighting and her on the fence. It was just beautiful. And right as I was about to take it, this second little girl who I don't know, that's why I blurred out her face. I wouldn't want somebody using my kids in their tutorial. That would be wrong. So uh, I made her unidentifiable, but she, she scrambled over and climbed up the fence right as I took the picture. And um, it was kind of a, a once-in-a-lifetime shot because my daughter is not super cooperative. So she immediately scrambled down and started playing. And So this was all I had to work with. Well, using the scissors tool and a lot of other tools and combining them, I actually managed to remove this little girl completely from the photo to end up with this second shot. And I'm going to show you a little bit how to use those scissors tools to do some cool stuff. So um, let's, let's pick a different photo. Um, my daughter, my older daughter, is really, really, really into Halloween and uh, plans her costume all year long. And last year, she wanted to be Thanos. So, I was actually, I saved some photos just that I could have a reference as I was trying to help build the costume. So we'll go ahead and use this Thanos uh, with the scissors. Now, I'm going to go ahead and remind you that if you have a stylus, this is actually a really good way to use the scissors tool. I'm going to be using my finger, which is just less accurate. But let's go ahead and click on the scissors, and there's really fairly good instructions right here if you forget how to use this. So, <clears throat> once you have used your finger or your stylus to trace the thing that you want to cut, to copy, to paste, you um, you go ahead and lift up and then tap on the screen again and and it'll give you all of those options. So I'm this is going to be pretty rough, just so you know. If I was working super hard on this, I would make sure that everything was very accurate. Now I'm holding my finger down right now. I'm not really moving it at all, and you'll see that um, this circle pops up and there's a little green dot in the middle. That's where my finger is. And the circle allows you to kind of view what you're doing at a closer angle, a closer zoom. See, and I'm really close to the edge of my phone there, so my, my finger's kind of bumping into it. 
Um, so there's the start of it. I'm going to keep going. Oh, man, this is not fantastic. That is my fault. Okay, but I'm going to do this nice rough cut here of Thanos. This is where if you have, say, a larger screen, it is easier. You can also just take your time and do a really good job, and that's what I would normally do because I actually don't have a stylus. I think it sounds like a great idea, but I don't typically use one. I hope that's his chair that I'm not tracing there. I'm not actually part of his body. Yeah, it looks like a shadow. I think I did that right. Okay. So let's get his shoe. Up to the knee. He's kind of an angular guy. My daughter's really cool, by the way. She makes an excellent Thanos. Okay, that is pretty rough. But now that it's outlined, I'm going to go ahead and just tap the screen. You'll see that a lot of options come up. In fact, to be perfectly honest, I have never used all of these. So maybe I'll experiment a little bit with you and see what some of these do. Or just experiment on your own so that this video isn't 100 years long. Um, the first thing I want to do, just to make sure that I have a copy of it, is I'm going to copy it. So let's go ahead and do a copy. Um, in fact, I think what I might try to do is save that just by itself in my sketchbook. Just that I kind of always have. Oh, um, actually, let's change this to Thanos 2. Done. Okay, and um, I think what we'll do with it is maybe just put them into another picture. So let's grab our sketchbook and get Sundance 3. Oh, that's interesting. So when I saved it as Thanos 2, I would have had to save it as something new there. It looks like it. I just changed the name of it. I didn't actually change it as, save it as a separate entity. Okay, so let's go to Sundance 3. We're going to open that up. This is the one that we were playing with before. Um, Let's say that I want Thanos to be right there on the trail. I'm going to tap this, and I'm just going to paste. So there's my Thanos that I cut out from the last picture. Done. And there he is. Should we make him as big as the mountain? If I want to, I can go ahead and expand him. Make him as large as you want. Now, if you save it, and he is outside the edges of your, of your picture there, those will get cut off. Uh, I don't actually think I want him to be that big. I think I want him to just be big enough. In fact, there's a little... <laughs> uh, there's a little uh, lift here, the Sundance lift. Maybe we can have him sitting on that. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so he's going to ride up on the lift. Are we done? Sure. Oh, but maybe we want another side of Thanos, so I'm going to put him in again. And this time, he's going to sit on top of the mountain. Why not? And let's add another one. Because this is fun. And let's uh, change his orientation. Let's make him go... Mm, mm, there. And uh, make him look like he's having a conversation with himself. Maybe I'm, that one's a little further away, so for perspective, let's make him a little smaller. Okay, so we've added some Thanoses. Um, I wonder what would happen if we did trim. I don't know. That didn't work. Hmm. Probably trim is when you first outline something. Let's test that in a minute. Um, okay, so let's save this as. That's my problem. I needed to save as on the last one. And we'll save it in the sketchbook. So let's save as 
Thanos takes over Sundance. Yeah, done. Great. And then um, maybe we'll try one other scissor tool just to just for the heck of it. So let's import something. Let's um, let's find something kind of basic. How about these bleeding hearts? Okay. Done. I really want to see what that trim trim tool does because I obviously have never used it and I don't know what it does. Okay, so um, I'm going to trace this nice rough trace of this bleeding heart. I'm a big fan of flowers in general. Oops, that's going to be a little angular. <clears throat> Sorry if I keep th clearing my throat on all of these videos. I actually have a cold that I'm getting over. I, my voice sounds a little bit funny too. At least that's my excuse. Okay, let's try trim. Hey, hey, that is neat. Okay, so I've learned something today. If you want to remove the background, you do trim. Let's see if we can undo that. You can. That's fantastic. All right, so um, let's do one more thing with this. You can cut it out completely. That'll do the opposite of, um, of the trim. Mm -hmm. I often hum while I work. Let's see what square does. Oh, that is really cool. See, I, I've never even used these features myself. So, um, Anyway, I'm guessing circle will do the other thing. It will take it'll take your edges there and turn it into a circle, uh, and then I wonder. Let's uh, let's copy that, and we'll actually do let's import and this time let's start over blank. I've been editing photos this whole time, but let's start over blank. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and widen that. I want to make it a full square. And uh, call that done. Okay, and then we'll do a quick paste. And there you have it. So let's, uh, let's make it bigger. Now, it did say square, and it's not perfectly square, but that's because if you noticed the edges of where I traced, it took those outer edges and then made straight lines around it, so in fact it is a rectangle. But that's still pretty darn neat. So let's leave it right here in the center. Uh, let's call that done. Am I done? I am done. And then let's try some of these other things that we've, that we've done before. I'm going to use the eyedropper. I'm going to pick... Um, this pink color right from the center. I'm going to use a fill. If you notice the eyedropper, once I use the, the eyedropper and I go to the fill, it changes it to that same color. I'm going to go ahead and color the outside. Uh, and then let's go ahead and use the brush. And maybe do the line mode. So we'll make a continuous line. We'll use the yellow. Make that size just a little bit bigger. And maybe put, if I tap around each of the corners, let's see if it does a continuous line to each corner. So we can kind of make a little box around it, like a frame. It's not perfect, but that's me, not the program. And there you go. Just one random thing you can do with the brush, the pick, and the fill. Now, we haven't used the eraser much. I admit, I don't use it that much myself. I usually use the undo feature. Um, let's change it so that the size is a little bit smaller. And maybe clear out. Uh, now let's do it like this. Go ahead and make another square that I've erased. And use the fill again. Let's uh, actually, let's use the eyedropper again. We'll use this green color. 
use the fill, fill that in, and there you have it. A fairly simple, rudimentary picture using the scissors to fill, the eyedropper, the erase, and the brush.